Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, a bit of an um... Uh, I bought another watch. <laughs> Confession time. per chi vuole questa professione, perché la volontà è un fattore determinante per poter riuscire nelle difficoltà che si incontrano sul percorso. No wristwatch check because I'm actually wearing it. I don't want to give the game away. Well, you're going to see it in just a moment, but I honestly did not intend to buy this watch, but I was kind of hunting around. Uh, I was actually looking at an entirely different watch, the um, the Breitling Chronospace. I'm not sure if you remember or, uh, me owning that watch, and I very, very much regret selling it. It still is a bit of a sweet spot, but this is even better value because um, it's not an Annie Digi Quartz or Super Quartz, or what, what was the expression? Yeah, I think Super Quartz. This is an automatic uh, diver uh, I bought for 750 bucks. It's a Colt, but it's not just any ordinary Colt. It is uh, a military, uh, dedicated military Colt. Cult? No, that's that. Well, the <laughs> Freudian slip there. Um, Colt from Breitling. So, who are the Consubin? Well, it's a fascinating story in itself. Let's take a look. It's a portmanteau of Regruppamento Subacquei e Incorsiore. This is a highly elite special operations unit of the Italian Navy or Marina Militare. The unit consists of divers, or sometimes referred to as raiders, with a history that can be traced back to the world's very first military frogmen. Italy was the first nation to use frogmen and human torpedoes. The then Royal Italian Navy's naval assault divisions are considered to be the precursor of all modern naval special forces. Their record can be traced back to World War I and operations against the Austrian-Hungarian battleship Viribus Unitis in Pula Harbour in 1918. If you have seen my Panerai video, you will undoubtedly remember that Italy's legendary frogman group originated in 1938 as the 1A Fortiglia Mezzi di Assulto, which was then reformed in 1940 as the infamous Decima Fortiglia Mass. They undertook famous operations, including at Suda Bay, Alexandria, Gibraltar and Malta. Just to give you an idea of how ahead of their time the Italian Navy were by utilizing divers for combat, the British SBS was formed a while later in 1940 and the US Navy SEALs in 1962. After the war, the Decima Fortiglia Mass was disbanded, but the training experience gathered during the conflict was not lost. It was preserved in units scattered across the new Marina Militare. Established by Admiral Gino Birindelli on the 15th of February 1960, the Consubin was named in memory of Tessio Tissei, the major of the Corps of Naval Engineering, who was the inventor of the famous human torpedoes known as Maiale, which means pig in English, and used by the daring frogmen during the war. This command is the custodian of the memory of the highly decorated Italian naval assault divisions which created a worldwide sensation during their heroic endeavours. The Consubin is currently based in three detachments near the Gulf of La Spezia in the Liguria region of northwest Italy. In keeping with its tradition, the command has long been known for its acquisition and use of unconventional weapons, along with its membership being a well-guarded secret due to the nature of some of their missions. Since World War II, aside from their domestic operations in the Mediterranean, they have been deployed overseas in the Adriatic, Albania, Lebanon, the Persian Gulf, Rwanda, Somalia, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, and so on. The emblem is just as cool as the intimidating skull and rose of their decima mass ancestors. It shows a crocodile framed in a shield like a coat of arms with a dagger in the mouth ready to attack amphibiously. So without further ado, let's uh, have a look at the unboxing and then um, I can show you it on the wrist. I'll do a quick knife check. We got the Kershaw Leek. I adore this knife, the Ken Onion designed little um, masterpiece there. 
uh, still in love with this knife. So let's do the first unboxing. And I have to say, I'm, I'm not that impressed with the package, uh, considering this is a watch. I mean, it, there was no box or, or, or in the listing, which is fine, but shipping a watch like this is a... Yeah, it's not very secure. I mean, look at that. So um, I'm a little bit concerned. Anyway, let's make the first incision. <laughs> It's got a little worse. I, I'm putting my hand in and I can feel the watch. No box whatsoever. So, I, God, is it even going to be in one piece? So, really low marks for the packaging, considering I, I paid, you know, 750 bucks, which I know to some people is nothing, but um, to me, it's a lot of money. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's do drum roll anyway, all right? Because why break tradition? seems to be intact it is going so um quite relieved well so here we are 200 meters water resistance uh, I, I know the crown had a little bit of the, the pvd coming off but so this is the um based on the colt but made by breitling just unscrewing the crown gonna give it a little wind yeah it seems to be winding nicely let's check the um quick set date here yep. That flips over. Let's pull out all the way. It is hackable, of course. Let's make sure that uh, I'm going to zoom in so you can check that. Uh, let's see that it clicks over nicely and the date functions perfectly as it should. Okay, so we're in the middle of the day, I presume. Well, so far, so good. Um, I'm really not impressed by the packaging. I'm going to replace this uh, rubber strap. Um, let's just check out the size because some people had listed these as 38 others as 37 yes yeah, 37.2 great size for me certainly just uh, look how how it compares to the the mighty flighty there but i am a little bit trepidatious let's let's take it back to the studio oh i should i should open the next package now this has been sent in by ndc and i've been after this it's going to be a tight squeeze, a bit of overlap, because of course the NDC is the um, the only uh, company in the world that does the original parachute straps, as as you can see on my flighty. Tons of imitations. Oh my god, look at that. He's done a custom. That is amazing, right. My god, this is so cool. So let's open it up. Oh wow, oh it's a watch case, love that that is lovely oh my god look at this yes that is awesome that is absolutely awesome so oh i've got some new stickers i mean ndc has the sickest uh merchandise without a shadow of a doubt love this stuff oh love it oh look at that oh my god so yeah i'm gonna squeeze this ndc into that i think that's the magic uh because i'm at the end of the day look i mean these ndc's the original this is the real mccoy i mean there's a lot of imitations out there i actually cut the end the extra off uh so it's a single pass through so it's even nice and, and and comfortable but the wonderful thing about these is that you could just slide it off boom adjust it uh water resistant expands as you expand this is the real real mccoy so there we have it now i didn't do a, a test of the the bezel on the uh or in the uh rather in the the other view in the in the light box but i have to say i'm really impressed with it it's it's so solid it's it's 60 click hold on yeah 60 click great resistance lines up perfectly unidirectional obviously i love the size i love the uh the gilt print of the logo especially it's one of the coolest logos and the great thing is there's so many different versions out there so let's have a little bit of backstory on um the colt by breitling the colt line of watches was a relatively recent collection from the swiss luxury watchmaker that was founded in 1884 Breitling is largely renowned for its innovations with creating the first of many features that we take for granted these days on chronograph watches, 
like the twin pushers for example, or combining sliding scales on aviation classics like the early chronomats and the massively iconic Navitimer. Like both of these aforementioned watches, the Colt was also originally intended for the military and later evolved into the luxury watch it is today. But this time it was initially created more as a diver mixed with key elements of field watches. Debuting in the early 80s, these mostly 200 and 300 meter capable time and date only watches often had 24 hour markings on the dial, baton hands, along with a countdown or dive time bezel. Later came the chronographs, Annie Digi hybrids and GMT versions, culminating with a complete redesign of the Colt in 2011. And today, as you can see from my many reviews on them, they are one of the best value entry level do it all luxury watches. But before winning over a broader audience through its sturdiness, reliability and uber readability, like so many watches, its roots lie in the ultra utilitarian and less refined versions like the reference 11068 I scored on eBay. Coated in PVD to avoid reflecting light unnecessarily and thus giving away one's position, this is the rarer automatic ETA 2892 based version with a simpler dial, unidirectional ratcheted 60 click bezel, tritium loom that as you can see has patinaed nicely and a flat sapphire glass. The more common are the quartz based variants like the reference 8210 with field watch style dials and the more pronounced scalloped bezels. There was even a version that unfolded to reveal a compass like the reference 80940 in the mid 80s. As the Colt was a new line, Breitling made thousands of them with sterile brandless dials featuring only the insignia of many military organizations from around the world and gave them essentially at low cost with the permission of these organizations. It is unknown how many or if any were actually officially issued as information online is very scarce and I'm still only in the preliminary stage of research. The Breitling Museum website has a good array of examples and here you can see the result of this more direct approach. Breitling had been given permission by the Italian armed forces to make watches for over a dozen, possibly even two dozen different parts of the military, from the Carabinieri, Brigata Paracadudisti, Folgore, the Accademia Navale, the Scuola Atelieri, and many other parts of the Marina Militare as well as the US Navy Air Force and some international military organizations too. These were then offered for sale to the Italian military personnel of these relevant units or groups at greatly discounted prices. So today there is an abundance of specialized versions. Many of these can be found for less than a grand in various states of wear. The watch snob may critique it for not having the prestige of being actually individually issued and numbered, but nonetheless, this is a great era of overlooked military watchmaking. If like me, you love military history or you are of Italian heritage, what could be cooler than having one of these on the wrist? And who knows what stories this watch could tell of clandestine operations it has been a part of. It was just fortuitous and perfect timing that it arrived the same time as the new blacked out uh, version of the NDC and I love how uh, they've done the the uh, hardware in PVD uh, but it's so comfortable I'm kind of tempted to buy a, um, a PVD Jubilee in um, 18 millimeters to, to get that uh, the bond which one was it It was Dalton wasn't it with the, um, the tag uh, Hoyer those were uh, issued to the Marine Nationale if you remember from my uh, watch history book. In terms of the watch case, this is a bespoke watch roll and they are made on request by NDC. The new black NDC strap is also made in the same factory as the original Marine Nationale straps they also offer. NDC is still the only brand in the world that makes the historically accurate real strap that have been actually used by the Marine Nationale. I will leave the relevant links in the description. But a massive thank you to NDC for offering a limited amount of Urban Gentry versions. This is indeed a massive honor. And lastly, per tutti i miei gentri italiani, per favore, lasciatemi un like su questo video. Grazie.
There is a little bit of dirt on the, uh, I, I, I suspect it's a flick of um, the patinaed loom that's come off and it's got stuck on the underside of the, the, the crystal there. But so far it's not performing erratically or anything. There is a bit of wobble on the rotor. It feels like a Vajoo 7750 to be honest, but nothing so far that um, indicates to me that I need to send it to my watchmaker. But at $750, I don't really mind, you know. Um, if I have to service it or put some money into it. The great thing is it's an ETA. And as I've said a thousand million times, uh, they are very affordable to service and maintain. So it definitely has to be one of the best scores uh, when it comes to watches. The size is perfect. It's got that connection uh, to well, a country that uh, I grew up in, being Italian, of course. The condition is remarkably good as well. There is a bit of wear on the crown, uh, but I knew that from the pictures. And I'm really happy it's the automatic, not the quartz, uh, because the quartz tend to be more easily available, although I think the prices will go up, especially as more people realize what a fantastic little part of Breitling's history that no one seems to remember. But so far, I am absolutely over the moon, chuffed to bits. Uh, all my other <laughs> cliched expressions are going to be uh, rocking the hell out of it and also where is it now to complete today's ensemble i actually bought this uh, commando sweater with the quarter zip from rothko these are very affordable i'll leave a link you can get them in uh, the urban gentry amazon store very comfortable i have to say practical am i the only one that does this but i tend to dress around the watch <laughs> should be the other way around but anyway who cares um, so yeah, check those out in the store. Uh, what else? Don't forget to like the video. Right, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Yeah. <laughs>